Welcome to the tutorial session of RotcellJ. First thing to do is to download the rotcellj.jar file from our website and you can put it inside the plugins folder of the imagej folder. Now you can start imagej and under the plugins menu you will see a couple of new entries concerning rotcellj and the rot skew. So for example if I start the plugin for uh, dynamic 3D images, this is the user interface. Uh, there's a couple of parameters that can be changed uh, throughout the experience according to uh, the movies. So I open a new project, I see this dialog window popping up and it uh, asks me for the pattern for control files, pattern for channel 1 files. So for example if I look at the folder I'm gonna open, which is that one, uh, I see that here I have uh, some bright field images, cherry images, GFP images. Uh, so all the images are in the same folder and in my case the cherry images are the control images and the GFP images are the images containing the, the protein of interest. So for example a pattern for control files would be cherry C if you want for example or just cherry and for the GFP images which are those you can just type GFP underscore C so the pattern is just a unique identifier that uh, tells the program whether it's control channel or uh, protein of interest channel. Number of slices per frame. In my um, example I have seven slices. So uh, you can try if auto works. So in that case the program tries to uh, identify by itself the number of slices. If it doesn't work, for example in this case you could type seven because you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, for GFP, obviously, it has to be in the same number of slices, so you could also just type 7. Then, this is the pixel size and the in slice distance. You type OK. Let me close this window. Now you can open the folder, so it's this folder I just showed you. Select first image of control channel, which is my very first cherry. Uh, channel image, there's no T001, so this is why I choose T002 because it's my first image. I open and the program opens the uh, movies by um, itself. So this is my movie. You see they're synchronized to Windows. So now, for example, you see my, my cells move a little bit, bit, so if you want, here I could cut the number of frames so you see I have 41 frames, but since they move a lot, uh, maybe I I uh, cut the movie if I want. So cut, you end up with 15 frames. Uh, but th it's unnecessary. You can you could just uh, leave it with the with the whole number of frames if you want. Then the first step is a pre-processing step. Just click OK. It does some uh, image quality enhancement. There's this window popping up for enhancing the contrast I suggest you just leave the default value you click OK and here you get um, those four windows so you see they're, not, they're named like control log answer channel 1 log answer segmentation image and channel 1 C projection so this is the control uh, channel and this is the channel 1 so what you do now is you select the proteins of the control channel. So, for example, by the way, the cursor you see it's uh, inframed by this uh, uh, red square. Uh, it means that at the blue, the blue cross is just within the red square, the point with highest intensity. So, uh, what you can do, for example, you can augment the square size, and it becomes bigger, as you see. We can do it even bigger you get this. So within the square you always get the blue cross always jumps to the point with maximum intensity. So for example if I want to segment that cell here I choose those two proteins of uh, in the control channel so I go on to the uh, log answer channel and I click shift or I press shift and click to choose it you see in red and for the second uh, protein as well, shift, click, two proteins are chosen now. It's important that you choose the two proteins uh, one after the other that uh, belong to the same cell. 
So not one protein in one cell, next in the other cell, and coming back choosing the second protein of the first cell. The ordering is important. Then if you want, I can choose the, another cell, for example. I mean, you could choose all of them if you want. I'm going to do the experiment with two cells so I can see how it works. So for example, if I choose this cell, I again go on the log image, I choose first protein, so shift, click, second one, shift, click. So I have my four proteins. Now I go back to the user interface, track control channel, I press and it tracks the proteins. So now if I zoom a little bit on my proteins, so you see if I go throughout the movie you see how they're tracked and now what you can see for example, and you can do the same thing here, you can check the tracks on that image as well, but this is the channel 1 image. So uh, the reason why you see the proteins here is because they're attached to the control channel uh, proteins but uh, I recommend to check always on the log answer because you, you have better contrast and uh, you see the proteins in a better way. So for example what you can see here is if I go at the end of my movie that the last track it failed to correctly track the protein. It didn't it went until here. So what you can do now is uh, you can uh, check edit individual track and now if you go with the cursor over the image you see the the track which is nearest to the cursor gets uh, into blue becomes blue so I want to edit that track here so what I do is once it's marked in blue I press control click and now it this track is chosen so uh, what I can do now is when I go throughout the movie at the frame where I think the protein was not correctly tracked, I can mark again this spot by uh, pressing again shift click and now I see the uh, uh, blue cross appear at the, at the spot that I wanted to mark. You can mark several spots throughout the, the whole track if you want. For example, if there would be another track, another spot would, that would be not correctly tracked you could for example that one, although it's correctly tracked, I just do it for uh, as an example so you go onto the spot, you press shift, click and now let me zoom on this so you can see you see I marked that spot first and that spot here is second and this is the starting spot which, which is already marked once you have all the spots marked you can press track and now you see it the track goes until uh, it, it tracks the spot correctly. In fact, so then to continue, you have to uncheck edit individual track. You can regroup the windows if you want, Just like that. And uh, the next step is the segmentation step, which is already uh, the button is already highlighted because the program uh, guides you through the steps. So you just press segmentation. You see the two pro, uh, cells that are segmented. You can zoom on that if you want, or on the image of segmentation, which is actually that one. And what you see is, in that case, I chose by purpose. Uh, I have chosen two cells where one cell uh, needs a little editing, so you can see how it works. So you see here that cell is not segmented as we would have, uh, as we want. So what we can do is in the segmentation panel, so before we were in the tracking panel, now we are in the segmentation panel we click again edit segmentation we get into this mode where the cells appear violet and the cell that we want to segment or edit we have we go over this cell with the cursor and we click and it gets highlighted in yellow and now the, the we can just click somewhere on the contour of the cell to move uh, a little bit the, the, the contour. So you can move it as, as we want. So approximate a little bit better and click the play button and it uh, optimizes by itself. Once we think it's uh, it's well optimized, if we still are not uh, satisfied, we could, we could continue to edit again and again. Optimize and once the cell is uh, fully segmented we click on the cross to go back to the uh, to the program mode 
can regroup the windows again and so the next step now is to, do, to draw the spots of the protein of interest we click here and we see a green 4 here which means we have four spots identified see one two three four they actually highlighted in green I hope you can see that um, if uh, for example spots are highlighted that are not uh, what you want so these are the spots in the they're marked in the first on the first frame so if you go throughout the channel obviously the crosses do not no longer correspond to the spot but on the first frame you see they're well uh, identified now for example if you had the spot that you don't want to identify you could uh, lower the threshold or higher the threshold and as a function of that spots will appear or disappear uh, another thing that you can do is um, specify the distance in pixels between the protein of interest and its corresponding uh, uh, reference protein so if you higher the distance you will find it the problem with search protein of interest in a, in a larger vicinity of the reference protein and if you lower the distance the vicinity will be smaller so once you have identified the protein of interest you can track them so you click track and now again we can go and verify from that image and we see how uh, the tracking works again if you're not satisfied you can uh, um, do the same uh, track editing story in the on the tracking panel so uh, if you want I can zoom on that one which shows all the results together so we see how the proteins are nicely tracked um, so now the last step would be on the results panel you see uh, chymographs two different chymograph buttons so we just press on them to see what happens so this is first chymograph if I zoom on it you see there's it's cell 1 so here we have a yellow number 1, yellow number 2 same here, so this is cell 1, cell 2 so this is the chymograph of cell 1 and if I go on to the second image this is chymograph of cell 2 and there's another kind of chymograph that uh, is described in our paper so this would be the second one again I can zoom on it so one is with respect to the cell location one is, is uh, the proteins with respect to the, themselves uh, so you see those are the two kind of graphs the second kind of kind of graphs and this is the first kind of kind of graphs so they're not the same as you can see um, so now you can display the results in a table if you want so you click on display and it does the this uh, Gaussian fitting that we described in our paper for every spot on the image so obviously in 3D it takes a little more time than, T, than in 2D or uh, in static images as well there you don't have movies and no, uh, no tracking steps so it will be even faster so these are the results for cell 1 as you can see here you can click here to go cell 2 or cell 3, 4, 5 if you have uh, more than one cell so uh, what you see here is uh, first a little uh, some image specification so the date, the, the folder, the data type, so 3D uh, in our case uh, pixel size, a uh, contrast value which is for specific for each cell, background value, uh, then you have uh, length of the of the cell, width of the cell, um, E1, E2, E3, E4 are parameters with respect to the cell that you can find in the, uh, they're described in the appendix of our uh, paper, then here you see the spots, so uh, these are the protein of interest in the, on the green table and in the red table the spots of the control channel so we have uh, location, fitted intensity, so this is the Gaussian intensity which I recommend to use, this is the maximum intensity that we detected relative intensity, so uh, uh, intensity of uh, the, the protein of interest with respect to the control uh, protein and uh, so you have cell 1, cell 2 obviously you can save these results so if I click save for example I save them on my desktop as test result 
save it appears on my desktop test results so this is a tab delimited text file for example uh, where you have you have the results for cell 1 cell 2 here so this continues uh, for all the cells and then for example if you want you can in Excel you could just import this text file so it's a text file desktop test result get data next so it's it's tab delimited as is specified in the in, in our paper click next finish okay and you have uh, all the values in Excel to do some uh, additional statistics on them if you want. Thanks for watching.